Hello, welcome to IMHO. In my homosexual opinion. I'm Darby. And I'm Alexis P. Bevels. The P today stands for Pride Month. Happy mm. Pride Month, everyone. Happy You're Pride gay. Queers. I just found out, yeah. I'm still coming to terms with it, but. Coming. That's actually, that's how I'm doing it, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And you you're got straight. The I'm back to being straight. But can I be honest? Yeah. Gay porn's hot. It's what I'm used to. You know when you do like muscle memory and you just go to the things that you... The devil you know. Like you know when your finger automatically goes, okay, Instagram first, TikTok. Well now it's TikTok first, Instagram next, Twitter next. When we get sick of those, your thumb goes to Pinterest. You look at that for a little and you say, why am I looking at this? You go to TikTok again. And you then have Pinterest on your phone? I love Pinterest. Can I be honest? Okay, that explains why you send gifts the way you do. I had an interaction with one of my favorite P-stars the other day on Twitter because he Pinterest mentioned... Pinterest stars? <laughs> yeah, one of, my, one, of my, one of my favorite Pinterest stars, his Linda. boards are so crazy because they have a hole in the middle. Right. He tweeted that he was going to Chicago and what are the good cruising spots? And I was like, Montrose Harbor Beach, the, the Montrose Bird Sanctuary. I've never used it for cruising. I actually like to go, I liked, liked to go and like walk among the waterfront. And... Mm -hmm. Yeah, she never used it for cruising. No, I didn't. I went there at night one time to try and I got too scared. One time. I got too scared. Does she remember? But I told him about it. I hope he went. And I hope I see those videos on his Just For Fans. Listen, Just For Fans takes a smaller portion than OnlyFans. We're not sponsored. No. But we're open. And we are happy to make a Pride Month announcement that we are starting a Just For Fans. Mm -hmm. And you can sign up by going to... Uh, it's me just like kissing the camera lens. <sighs> Yeah. For everyone that joins, An angel I'm gonna go. Dies. I'm gonna go to the Renaissance Fair and get my hand dipped in wax, and you send it to you, and then we can hold hands. I love that. I've listen, never done it. I haven't honest. either. I didn't. Should we try it? Listen, mall kiosks. Can I tell you? If we went to a mall, and we did often, oh. the kiosks were a luxury. I just got okay. I just got really horny at the idea of ice cream. Okay. In a mall or just in general? Just like in general. Should we get ice cream? Right. After no, this? I have high cholesterol. Oh, I don't. It's shocking. <laughs> <laughs> Your diet alone. <laughs> okay. So we. <laughs> She's got TB. <laughs> I've seen this. I've seen how this ends. Um, so Satine. we are back for another episode of All Stars. Oh! Yes. And one thing I, I will say, I am very much a person that if you don't want spoilers, don't go on social media, right? That's just like kind of a typical thing. Mm. But in the world of streaming, it's a little different, right? So when the episode airs at like 7 p.m., yeah, don't go on Twitter that night. If you can't watch the next morning or next day, stay off Twitter. But when the episode drops at midnight, it is really bizarre to get onto Twitter at like 6 a.m. and everyone's like breaking down the episode and there's a picture of the person who got eliminated or left or whatever. I don't know. I was always such a strong, like, you know the risks, but like, do you need to be live tweeting at midnight? Can you just, can you but, adapt your personal schedule to mine? But what if our midnight is there 7 p.m.? Midnight! Ugh, it's not like Ginger Minj. Should we just get into it? Yeah, I did. Okay, All Stars 8. Did yeah. this episode eat? I think it kind of did. Oh, it did. It did. Oh, it okay, did. this is a snatch game of love. There's no mini challenge. There's no anything. There's a teensy bit of pre-cog drama. I liked we'll get it. Into. Yeah, yeah. Let's I like get into it. It's Fuck fun it. to have drama in so, our shows. basically what happened was Heidi Thought overheard... she was safe in an alliance with Candy and Jimby. But then she heard that Candy mm. said the minute Jimbo is in the bottom. I'm sending her ass home. So she told Jimbo. And then I guess Jimbo told Candy? And Alexis I... was in there somehow? Well, she was just crying. I got where Heidi was coming from because like, yeah, if someone in your alliance is like, I'm just waiting for the perfect time, of course you're going to tell the other person in the alliance. So I didn't understand Candy's critique of being like, but where, she... where's your loyalty? And she's like, well, where's yours? But she... Yes, and also the whole reason Heidi did that was because Candy she brought did. up stuff in front of the camera. 
Right. So Heidi was kind of retaliating, kind of de offensing, and then she kind of got Alexis involved. I don't really understand, but also, yeah, that's we want the drama on TV. Can you Alexis producer Alexis initially is like, yes, I heard that, and then they ask her to clarify, and she's like, I didn't hear anything. <laughs> she didn't say that, but she was like, oh no, no any of the points Heidi's are trying to make, I didn't hear that. And then she that burst into tears, and then she burst into tears. Listen, that wasn't good. Alexis Michelle is great television. And she's I, a great snatch game. She is messy. She's a messy, messy girl, and I love that. If she was on Housewives, I think she might be a one season. She's coming in too hot all the time. We'll come back to that drama because I, I forgot that we do have yeah. Snatch Game first. We have Snatch Game of Love, and yes. oh, should we just get into it? Let's do it. I am such a huge Las Culturistas fan. Mm -hmm. I got into it because a little girl over here named Darby, Hi. she got booked to Ooh. do one of their famous I don't think so honeys. Ew. And Matt wasn't there, Ooh. Bowen was there. I know, I got to give him a hug. And I, he said, thank you so much for being here. And I said, oh, I'm such a big fan. He goes, I'm a fan of yours. And I was like, Bowen, I choose to believe it. Ah! They're so nice. I know. They're so nice. Cause you know and he didn't have a fuck idea who you were. I. <laughs> I didn't know that. You know what? You know that? I didn't know that. He knows so, I I mean. Well, no, 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 I'm sure you're right. And thank you so much for just keeping it real with me. Listen, when I start to get too self-involved, I can always count on you to tell me that Bo and Yang you're, I don't want you to fly too high. Anyways, I said, what is this? This sounds fun. Looked it up. Now I'm obsessed. Mm -hmm. I've listened to all of it. I listen to every Wednesday. And both of them separately from the show are just like, up, up. They're flying too high. Lightning in a bottle. They're well, flying Bowen's too high. Bowen's on SNL, and Matt and, Rogers is and on. Bowen, I think you should leave. No, I love that for you. I love Happy, that for you. Thanks for coming. And let's not forget, Bowen Yang is going to be in John M. Chu's Wicked's Parts 1 and 2. <gasps> I'm so happy for him. Did you see the recent footage of I did. him and Ari? I don't, did. don't do... I mean, I'm sad that the drones keep spoiling, but I also love it. The IMHO a... drones have been insane. Like, there have been IMHO mm. drones almost every what, every time. So the, the people across from us have hummingbird feeders, and I told her that the hummingbirds were drones, so just play along. Oh, look, there's two drones There's fighting, two drones right there. And they're fighting. Like yeah. drones do. Fuck, I think they're mating. There's gonna be three drones soon. Oh, fuck. We are big Matt Rogers and Bowen Yang. We're big fans. Matt Rogers, we're big Bowen Yang, and I'm a big John M. Chu. You are too. We love. What he do? Crazy Rich Asians. I love. It's one of my top favorite book romance series. movies. Well, the book series is phenom. I know, you told me about it. Why won't you read them? I'm reading the first one. For I took how long? Pause. Yeah, it's been a couple of years. <laughs> I keep taking a pause. They're too rich. They're too rich. It was my airplane They're book. They're too rich. It was my airplane book, and I haven't been on an airplane recently. <gasps> okay, can I tell you something? I wish you would. In confidence. And Cut the cameras. <laughs> so I'm getting back into reading, okay? I believe in the power of words. You're welcome. Thank you. No, truly. Yeah. It is because of you. Yeah. Oh. I was into reading for a little bit, and then I passed it to you, because now I'm not, and you are. And then mm. you'll pass it to me, and we'll just kind of ping pong book style. That's how pink eye works. Anyway, so <laughs> Curtis notices, right? And yeah. And he wants to encourage that, because he loves when I have words, and they come out of my mouth. He, he actually, he doesn't. He, he hates that part. He hates that part. in your mouth. Yeah. He just decides to get me a book. It's because he heard about it on his favorite podcast and the book is about a true crime story and he knows I like true crime. So he was like, I got this book for you because my favorite comedians loved it and you like true crime. And I was like, okay, great. It's heavy, okay? I'm not talking about the, the crime part. The book itself. The cover's made of steel. No, it's just, it's detailed. And I'm not talking about like the murder part. Like I'm fine with those details, okay? I am, what is it called? Desensitized. Mm. It's turn of the century, 1800s, okay? So automatically, we gotta keep it moving, okay? That Anna was a Karenina. long time ago. Anna Karenina. So this book, it's like this, okay. The officer who arrived at the scene first was named blah, 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 blah. His family was from blah, 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 blah. They lived two blocks over. Their address was 324 Brownstone Way. Like all exactly. And then when you get to the end of the paragraph, we never hear from the person again. Why did we need that much information if that person was gonna disappear from the book forever? 
Maybe they'll come back though. Did you finish it? Well, no, there's so much detail. <laughs> but everything has detail. Like, it'll yeah. be like the building had 364 bricks. Well, sometimes the details are necessary and the add to the final product. Much like in the Snatch Game of Love, Thank a you. lot of these details were good. Let's start with the bad group, which sure. was the first group. But Matt Rogers looked so good. Matt Rogers looked so good. I completely agree with you. And I loved that the, the purse matched so much and that he was like, his little Showing. jumpsuit thingy. Urban Outfitters, I'm getting targeted ads on Instagram. They sell that as a duvet, as a comforter. Oh, that print? Yes, and I want it so oh. badly. But you know, everything is so overpriced at Urban Outfitters. Where do they get off? On duvets. Yeah. Listen, he looked so good. Yeah. Let's go on down the line. Heidi in closet. She was a black beard. Now, I like this choice. You've I always said it. you think mm -hmm. it's the smart thing to do a historical figure and just like kind of be yourself if you're funny. Yeah. So it's really hard to embody celebrities for certain people. I'm one of those people. If I could pick someone that they don't really have a personality that like a definitive personality that we know. Yeah. I thought it was hilarious. Yeah. I thought it was really good. It was a really good choice. What I love about Snatch Game of Love is All Star Snatch Snatch game editing is so much nicer than regular snatch game editing because they will absolutely let the girls have it. And with this one, even when Kahana was like bombing, we'd get the moment where everyone's like, oh no, what's gonna happen? And then they would give her a funny line. So they still- Cause there were some little nice. moments I was chuckling with Kahana. Yeah, I thought overall, yeah, the group wasn't as strong, but the way it's edited, I just really appreciate it. They're yeah. nicer to the, these girls. We did have Jessica Wild, we had Kahana Montrese, and then James Mansfield did do a really good job as Jennifer Coolidge. I didn't hear Jennifer Coolidge the no, way no, no. that Candy was like, like, you sound just like her, I mean, I heard James Mansfield, but yeah, she was quick. She was funny. She's really she funny. She looked really good. Of the entire group, I think I enjoyed James the most. Yeah, it went James. Heidi. Heidi. And then I think Jessica. Kahana. Kahana. And then Ka Jessica. And then Kahana. Oh, I would put Kahana above Jessica. Jessica, I felt like, was playing a completely different game from everyone else. I didn't fully yeah. understand it, but I like the energy. And I loved Kahana's idea. Paying tribute to your mom, wearing... The exact outfit yeah, from the moment. Yeah, it's the so funny. And she was trying to pull the references. That's the tough part about Snatch Game is because you can come with a bunch of references, but you gotta make them fit what they're saying. Yeah. Now, what did you think of Heidi... Kind of like ribbing Goading Kahana. her. Yeah. yeah. Kind of, I thought she was playing the Snatch Game. I agree. I do understand. I very much a lot of times feel that way yeah. or have felt that way. Like, don't kick me when I'm down. Like, the audience is already mad at me. But I think it was innocent. I think you can choose to be mad or you can do the smart thing in Snatch Game and choose to turn it into a joke. Like, if someone tries to get you with a dart, you got to take the dart out and you got to throw it back. Or if someone tries to get you with their wooden leg, you got to take that wooden leg and you gotta stab them. Stab them hard. Or someone hands you a map and says, here, this is for you so you can find the joke. I would say, ma'am, this is a menu for Bennigan's or something. Bennigan's? I miss Bennigan's. What an odd choice. I love Bennigan's. I miss I, it. I understand. Sorry, I don't mean to roll past Bennigan's. I've got nothing to add. I understand <laughs> Kahana's emotional response to it, but I'm sorry, she's wrong. <laughs> I think Matt did a good job as the Snatchler. I think he did. Yeah, he's cute. He worked well with what he had. He chose James Mansfield. Cute. Now it's time for group two, and this was a really good group yeah. with super hottie Bo and Yang. So we have two Snatch Game winners in this group. Oh, which yeah. Which probably made the other two go. And huh. one person who had never played Snatch Game before, Miss Lala Reed. So impressed. She did great. She held she it really up did. really good. Yeah, she really did. Alexis Michelle killed it as Liza. She's doing B. Arthur. Didn't have to change her voice. No. Sounds exactly like B. Arthur, Absolutely. and I'll never be able to unhear it. Nope. Looked incredible. Yes. Looked incredible and yes. had that quick biting wit that B. Arthur had. B. She... Arthur was notoriously a cunt. Yeah, I love that about her. That's why we all love her. That's why gay people <laughs> Catherine love Catherine Heigl. She's no B. Arthur. The thing I love about Alexis is that she cosplays as real life people really well. She does a solid Judy, a solid Liza, a solid B. Like, I think anybody you throw at her. What, who is she in the island? Marl, Marl, 
Marl Ginsburg. Out of the entire group, I thought Alexis took all the references and she related them better than anyone else yeah. did. Yeah, and even though Rue made it might have been the only one on the stage who knew those specific references, we could all tell they were funny. Well, I don't see, okay, I must say this about the Los Culturistas boys. They have brains that are filled with pop culture knowledge. I promise you, not a single reference went over Bowen's head. I promise Oh, no, you. no, 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 no. I promise Bowen you. is so He knows smart. it all. Yeah, we It love. is wild. It's wild how much they know. They retain and they're able, and at the end of every year, they do like a hundred, what is it? A hundred moments well, the or whatever. They have done that. Right now they're doing the Las Culturistas Culture Awards. Yeah, and they're but they able always, to just they're pull. always doing stuff like that. Like they... they did the Great Culture Songbook. It was like 300 songs. We we literally tell the same stories 10 times over we on this show. We only have five stories and we change them to be 10. And we we get lost in those. How do they keep track? Anyway, but yeah, she was great. How I thought, I, for done? me, I thought Alexis was kind of the shining star of the group. Yes, Oops. next to Alexis is Candy Muse and she was someone I don't know from a show I've never seen. And she, was, she was also pretty candy about it. Yeah. But Candy has that thing where no matter what she says, RuPaul's gonna die laughing. She's, no matter what. No matter what. And I love that. I As mean, a yeah. viewer, let's say I don't fully know what she said. But if she, Ru's laughing, I'm laughing. But I thought she did good, especially since yeah. she was nervous about it. She and Lala really held their own in a group where they could have easily fallen to the... Been overshadowed. Yeah. yeah. And then, of course, was Jimbo, who bodied Shirley Temple yeah. and just kind of slayed this. I think... Jimbo is the AI version of someone who watches all of Drag Race, has done it multiple times, and is finally coming with everything super strongly prepared, except for lip syncs. Mm -hmm. Jimbo knows how this show is done now and is just slaying every time. This yeah. is really funny. Mm -hmm. She looked good. She sounded so weird mm -hmm. and funny. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it was kind of undeniable. It's kind of a brilliant choice. It took me back to Eureka doing Honey Boo Boo. Doing a dumb little child with that stupid baby Impersonating voice. a dumb little child, not doing one. You have to watch what you say because the conservatives are everywhere. Oh, I forgot you're a groomer. They I'm sorry. So, of wigs. The thing about Jimbo though, I laughed, okay? I laughed. I loved the tap dance, but I think what won it for her was the chaos of it. The references, I don't know, for me, part of me, Alexis kind of killed oh, yeah. that. But Jimbo kind of stole the spotlight with her chaos in a way that kind of made us, or made Rue forget about Alexis in some situations. So yeah. maybe Jimbo was playing the game better. Then they go back to the workroom. Okay, Wait, then what? they have a lip sync. The boys have to lip sync for their life, which was a little corny, but you I know, you know they have been dreaming and waiting to hear those words and do that on the stage. They no. love Drag Race so much. Right, but no. I'm sure they wanted to. No. What I saw was not two faces that were thrilled to be doing it. It was just, it kind of came out of nowhere. There didn't seem to be any reason for it. It's on the Snatch Game of Love set. Suddenly the set grew and they were just kind of dancing in front of the set. It was weird. I thought it was weird. See, I think they were like, could you please just say it to us for once and like let us sing a little bit? Maybe. No. Because they're fans of the show. Oh, I'm sure. And I'm sure if they, you know, as they're doing their walk-ins, they're filming their walk-ins, they're walking down the... I'm sure if she had said it then, they would have been thrilled. But in front of the set, they are just on a white floor. And the floor just kind of, it just kept going. There was so much floor. Then we go back to the workroom. Then we get into it. So well, it starts with Kahana confronting Heidi. Mad that she kind of ribbed her. And then Heidi's like, no, no, no. I was just doing TV. And then Candy said, well, as long as we're talking about this, we're going to talk about this. I don't do impressions. <laughs> <laughs> I just said that. So she confronts her about the Jimbo stuff and Heidi kind of breaks and not for the first time this season. She's also kind of broken yeah. and tucked. So she bounces. Alexis bursts into tears for no reason and I, out of body experience, I loved it. I loved it. It's the <laughs> best thing Alexis Michelle has done on this show. It was beautiful. <laughs> it was beautiful. But Heidi decides to Heidi leave. Decides it's to too leave much. mid -phase. What do you think? Her eyebrows were still purple. I feel sad. 
I get it. I am the queen of I don't like Quitting. this situation. I want to be out of it now. So I loved that she stood up for herself in that moment and mm -hmm. I thought it was great. I do think it was kind of weird because she wasn't in the top top, but she wasn't in the bottom. Like she was doing a good job. Maybe it was just like the feelings of like, I don't like what this is doing to my real life friendships. I don't like that TV is happening. I was in a really unique position as I was watching this because I watched it this morning. Were you doing your yoga poses? Yeah, I was doing my, oh, you know how much I love. So when you I wake up. You love to watch down, you love to watch TV and downward dog. I do. I do a lot of yoga when I wake up. I wake up in the morning and I do my happy baby roll on the ground pose. And then you do your like three, three sheets to the wind or whatever. Yeah. And I'm so thankful for all of the sheets that have been donated. So last night I got in my feelings about something and I took something a little too personally and I wanted to escape the situation, right? And then today I'm watching this and I'm seeing her do the exact same thing. And I think if I hadn't had the experience I had last night, I think I would have been a more like, that was so dumb. But watching it through that lens, you do you, babe. You yeah. already have a career. It is kind of interesting because to me, Heidi was a front runner. So to see a front runner just kind of bounce in the middle of the series, it does kind of and like push other people towards the front. Yeah. And I think it helps. And also like you didn't, people. you didn't, it took a lot to get there. Like you spent mm -hmm. a lot of money. You put a lot of work into coming back. I mean, if you don't stay, you can't lose. Now that I love, you but, know what? I am but not I quit. <laughs> We're not a competition show yet. We will be. I thought it was. I'm happy sweet. she did what it she was had so to do. Quick. Yeah, it was sudden. I wanted more. I wanted more. But also, I'm glad that she stood up for herself and is doing what she needs to do to remain safe and sane. I can't say that I believe there's no regret there. I'm sure later on when she was able to set those emotions aside, I'm sure there's a little bit of regret. But ultimately, you got to take care of yourself. And we know how long, listen, people were in the middle of their makeup. It was hours before they got to the runway. So it wasn't until hours later that Rue made the announcement that it was official that she was gone. So it may have seemed really quick to us, but I'm sure there was a lot of conversations being had. I'm sure she yeah. was back there for hours talking about it. Yeah. And ultimately she did what was best for her. Look, I adore Heidi. And now Adore and Heidi are the only two to ever walk off of an all-star set. Not true. Vendilla Creme. Oh, but that was different because she was definitely gonna win. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. That's so true. All right, should we get into these runways? Because it was Reveal Me runway. Yeah. Actually, can I ask you about your look before I run away? I wanted to wear something that was the beginning of a reveal. What was it a reveal to though? My pickle. <laughs> Open up. Ew! Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, no I know. I, as soon as I said it, I felt really bad. I'm revealing, because I was fully covered last time, so I'm revealing my face. My skin is how a lot is your, better. How is your skin? It's a lot better. Good. You know what? The day after that, I... You're making a lot of skin-to-skin -skin contact. <laughs> What's important to establish a connection? Yeah, but my legs are so strong. <laughs> it's gonna make, it's gonna do stuff. Well, I was, when, actually, they're bony. Thank you. Well, it's my knee. You ever touched a knee and gone, mm, good and smushy? Yeah. Oh. It's my own. <laughs> <laughs> um, skin is good. I, I tried some skin topical. is good. I tried skin is good. <laughs> Y'all, I don't know if you heard. Skin, skin is, is good. good. Okay, let's get into these looks. First okay. of all, Miss RuPaul. Loved. Done. Done. Listen, sh uh, 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 short. I gotta, yeah. Short. Sh uh, love it. Sparkle? Huh? Spikes. Mm. Blonde. Right. Fun. Reveal, reveal, we're gonna start with Jessica Wilde who is doing another callback to her very famous chicken moment. First she was yellow feathers. She was chicken. Then and... she was egg, but kind of cute. And then she was yolk. I thought it was cute. Could have been sparklier to me, but I thought it was fun. I did not like it. I liked the final look, the little egg suit thing she was wearing. That was cute. Or the, the like the yolk part, but the just, yeah I, yeah, I think if you're gonna do a successful reveal, the way that Drag Race has created reveals, like has really required reveals to be a part of a successful drag career at this point, we have seen it all. So I don't like reveals that immediately look like reveals, that almost yeah. look like a last minute addition. And those first two, 
for me, those look like reveals. Yeah. Kahana Montrese, she is very Vegas showgirl. At first I was like, oh, she's just wearing a revealing outfit, but then she revealed the, she took off burlesque style of the bra, and then she took off the panty, and I was like, yeah. okay, this is a reveal. Yeah, when she first came out, she kind of came out from under her boa, and I was like, was that the reveal? You bitch. Yeah. You bitch. She looks But then she revealed stunning. To not be able to see a reveal coming, that's a reveal I like. Yeah. That, that's a reveal I like. Really good. James Mansfield got to do more puppetry things again, and this Lots. is so fucking cool. She's a fuzzy monster, and then she's James Mansfield, then she's <laughs> sluttier James Mansfield, mm -hmm. and then she's slutty is James Mansfield with the titties. Yeah, her initial reveal from the Muppet to the pink dress, I was like, uh-oh, we've seen this a thousand times, but then it revealed. Then it kept going. I also love. Also Vegas showgirl style. Love well, it. she's a Vegas girl now. Burlesque. I love her body. I, yeah, I loved it. Candy Muse was a little housewife, and then she was a beautiful red dress. She was a red dress. And then she was a slutty space go-go. I thought it was cute. It wasn't my favorite, but I thought it did the job for a reveal. Yeah, it, my issue was none of it was connected in any way. She went from housewife to red dress for some reason to alien. It didn't make any sense to me. And the alien look and the red dress, they also looked kind of like afterthoughts to me. Ooh! Do you know what it reminded me of though? It's Remember in the beginning of Mrs. Right. Mr. and Mrs. Smith when Angelina Jolie is wearing that yes. fabulous trench coat yes. and then she has the stuff under. She has that gorgeous purse that unravels as she's flying down the side of it. You know what I've always wanted to do? See her naked. Is I've always, uh, Sorry, I projected. I've always wanted to do side of a building something with a purse. Because it happens in Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Do and side it happen of the building. And it happens in Brenda Starr. She takes the strap of her purse off and she uses it like a grappling hook and she swings across. Oh. That's a really good movie. Brooke Shields' relationship with her mom is so fucked up. La La Ree. Now the final look I like. I agree. Listen, her final look might the, be my favorite. It was La -La beautiful and so, so good. Far. But the what reveal, was the, it, it was wasn't a cape, it was just fabric. It was fabric, yeah. yeah that was a bummer. Yeah. But the final look, Lala, I loved it. I loved it. Yeah. She doesn't watch this, does she? In case, like, okay, let's say that she gets stuck in an elevator with me. I'm gonna show her. <sighs> this part. Just this part. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of parts, Jimbo. What a way to reinvent Drag. the reveal. We're all expecting yeah. people to throw things off. Jimbo came out a dude and then walked backwards and then turned around and it's Jimbo in Adam and Eve vibes. It was brilliant. She pulled a it was snake another, from her apple. And then a snake from an apple. Oh, sort of dick in the box vibes. Listen, I love biblical lore. And she got her face casted. That Adam is her face. Yeah, that was the thing when Michelle was like, whose face is that? I was like, Michelle, put on your glasses. I thought this was brilliant. It, this it, was brilliant. It, it has was created something new, yeah. and I think we're gonna see a lot more of this in Do you remember that movie Malevolent? Culture. That movie Malevolent? It's kind of a funny, scary movie. Who's that? Angelina Jolie. Oh, you wanna see her naked? That's Maleficent. What did I say? And I also just love that she took a biblical story and was like, oh, I'm gonna make it like drag. Cause I love when we drag up Bible. Adam okay. and Eve was kind of the original drag race. They had to fuck their own kids. That's the other thing. I wanna say this, Pride Month. All these fucking people who wanna take the rainbow back. Oh, we gotta take the rainbow back. This is God gave us a rainbow. Yeah, God gave you the rainbow. You know when? After he drowned everybody. He drowned everyone in the world, including children. Okay, and then he gave you the rainbow and you think that's beautiful? That's a warning. We took what God threatened you with and we made it a little tacky. Oh, that's okay? where you got but the fun. idea for genocide, probably. Genesis. I still maintain, like, weren't there fishermen back then? Like, didn't they have boats? I don't know. It doesn't make sense. Your Bible's silly. Every time you look at a rainbow and you think, oh, I should take that back. Think of all the children that were drowning and they were like, what is happening? They didn't know what was happening because they were five. Why is God doing this to us? I, I don't know. I'm five. Maybe because they were all... I can't breathe anymore. Yeah, I don't know. Can I tell you something that sure. happened today at my gig? Yeah. There was a gentleman who almost won bingo and his name was Christian. Oh. And I said, ooh, trauma. <laughs> <laughs> Alexis! You can't. 
I didn't do that. I did. HR wasn't there, I asked. Okay, good. And then I told the story about how when my dad baptized me, he held me under for three full Mississippis. Too One much Mississippi, baptism. two Mississippi. I had to tap out of my own baptism. Not your trans. <laughs> yeah, you did too much and I overcorrected. <laughs> he said, I'm in the wrong body. <laughs> 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 Speaking of transitions, Alexis <laughs> Michelle revisiting an iconic. Okay, when Alexis Michelle was first announced on season nine, mm -hmm. there was an iconic video of her mm -hmm. doing the witch transition from Into the Woods. Right. And so she's revisiting it, updating it. I thought it was really good. I just thought it was such a shame her one lash was I so know. wonky from the mask, which is you mess with the mask, you're going to get a lash. Honestly, though. But it was beautiful. I could tell that it, if it was on purpose. I was like, maybe it's on purpose and well, because one or eye Or maybe was... it's not because one eye is black and one eye is white. Maybe it just looked wonky. Uh, it looked really wonky though. I just want to say this. Ross Matthews. Wait, was Ross there? Ross was there. Okay. He was the third one and he said I wish the dress was yeah. the color. I just want to say this. Ross Matthews, you are the blueprint for bagotry. You should know better than to say you want the witch's costume to be something other. It's Into the Woods, baby. Well, I think- It's Into the Woods, technically, baby. Technically, I think in Into the Woods, her costume is like a fabulous color. No, it's not. Isn't it? In the movie version, it was like a dark purple. Well, don't get me black. started on the movie version. Well, James Corden and Anna Kendrick, well, but Meryl Streep. Why are you gonna put Cinderella why, in a ball gown that's also, a fucking why, tube dress? Why do you? Okay. The people who have well, issues with Meryl Streep singing, first of all, I like I think Anna Meryl Kendrick. Streep is a really I good like singer. that movie Camp, and I think but she's brilliant in the Twilight she peaked, series. She peaked at Camp. But I don't she want camp. her as she Cinderella. And if you're gonna give little Anna Kendrick, then who's give her this some lips. Give Over her, draw her lips. a ball She's gown, none. bitch. I want to see proportions to make her look taller, not a column dress. Oh, I hate column dresses. I'm mad. What if she fell down the stairs? Oh, Alexis, if you don't figure out what to do with your phone. Why is it so hard? Your phone is smaller than mine. Oh, by the way, I saw the Little Mermaid movie. It was so cute. You what? I saw the Little Mermaid movie. You've asked me a hundred times, do you want to see it? <laughs> and every time I go, yeah. When I was asking it? if you wanted to see it, not if you wanted to. I just assumed you didn't want to see it with me. Oh, you just wanted to know if I wanted to at some point in my lifetime. Yeah, that's what I asked. Got it. Okay. Was that it? Was she the last That one? was it, Vibes. We do have a winner, and it's Jimbo for the second time in a row. Congratulations, Jimbo. To me, again, Alexis won, but Jimbo's runway was so iconic. Jimbo's runway iconic. was so good. And Alexis's was too, but it's not new. We love novelty. It's not new. We love, we love novelty. novelty. Yeah, I honestly think Jimbo might win this whole thing. Or she'll be the Pangina heels of it all. Who knows? We do have some bottoms, and it is unfortunately Miss Jessica Wilde and Miss Kahana Montrese. We get a limp sync with, speaking of iconic, Jasmine Kennedy, who, by the way, during her season, would you have ever thought that she no. would be one of our favorites? No. And no. now we love her, and we've gotten I... the chance to see her in real life, and it's always so wonderful. Yes, and the first time we saw her in real life, she did mention that I had some critiques for her for her season. But and to be she fair, saw it, you but did. She, and I did, and I did. I didn't like her stuff the first go around. But that's why, but she's that's changed the beauty of wrong. opinions. We have the ability to change and our, she, we reserve the right to but change she's our opinions really, at any time. She's really fun in real life and she is always at a 10 and gorgeous. she wasn't like, you said shit. She was like, I saw what you had to say and then she laughed. But that's the point of the show. She was gorgeous she's, she is gorgeous. Every time and we she, see her, she's just so nice. And of course, she's so nice. She delivered an incredible lip sync and of course Jimbo just kind of did what Jimbo does. Listen, is Jimbo trolling us? Oh, I wanna say this. I saw that tweet that said, if you keep losing lip syncs, should you be able to win a series that is supposed to be like the Olympics of drag or whatever? I'm uh, ad living, whatever, I'm paraphrasing. Some, some would say, yes. Yeah, because Jimbo's playing the game really, really well. Bianca, yeah, she could win. Bianca, Bianca Del Rio. lip sync at all. Well, Her she did. Life. Well, they did the music video and they had to walk on treadmills or whatever. Oh. You did kind of go, oh, be, oh or I whatever. never have to see that again. Yeah. Are you gonna watch, watch Drag, drag Me to Dinner? dinner. Get out of my brain. Watched, we should watch an episode tonight. I watched Meatballs episode last night. It's the only one I've seen. It's the last episode. You really shouldn't start with it because it's a really good episode. Does she win? I can't imagine that it's gonna. I'm not gonna spoil it for you. Yes, but you know who she's up against? Who? Galena. Oh. It was sweet though. It was really sweet to have this kind of celebration of drag show because that's what it is. It's a competition between two teams, but really. 
you're just watching drag queens have fun. Oh, and I like doing that. I like that Hecklina was able to have this as like a, or that the people that loved her are able to have this as something to look back on. It's, I just, yeah, it oh, was really, really sweet. sweet. Meatball though, I will say every time Hecklina and Peaches Christ are talking, they can't cut out Meatball's voice in the background. She screamed the entire episode. It was hilarious. Yeah, go watch it. So, big twist. Jasmine wins the lip sync over Jimbo. It's oh, shocking. she did that back walk it's over shocking, into a split. But Jimbo lost. Shocking. No. And then we find out, LOL, Heidi sent herself home, no one's going home. Which I was really happy about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would have sucked. I was a little surprised. Sucked. They got me. I was like, oh wait, we're going through with it? Yeah. Oh wait, maybe Heidi's exit was planned? But, no. That's I don't, good, because I don't want to see, see I don't want to see any of them go either. I'm actually really enjoying this season okay, and liking it. But, but I do want to see a double elimination to your throat, later. You have to send one of the bottom two home who we're sending home. I think it might be Kahana's Jessica. time. Oh, really? You have no respect for your elders. Are you telling me that Jessica is outperforming Kahana? Do you honestly believe that? Visually? Yeah. No. But auditorily? <laughs> <laughs> you mean like the sheer volume of her voice? <laughs> Yeah, maybe. That's wild. Okay. Oh, I see what you did there. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to see more, of course, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. And then after that, I want you to go to your keyboard. Mm -hmm. I want you to go, <gasps> mm hmm Right. Type in patreon.com slash IMHO the show. Right. Get in on that action because we got to. some really good stuff going on there. We do. We're also both on Cameo. So if you want a message from us to a loved one, a hated one, or both, hit us up there. Yeah, and make sure you're ordering those Cameos from like Wednesday <laughs> on. <laughs> Alexis has Fridays and Sundays off, so we usually film on Friday or Sunday. That would be really helpful for us if you only ordered them, like, on a Thursday. And no, no, no. I'm so grateful for every cameo no, I get to do. I love you. Thank you so much. But, you know, what you could also do is order a shamio. That is a message from both of us. It's a video message. Oh, it's so beautiful. And it's got the background. And you usually we film those at the end of the night, and usually they are unhinged in the best way yeah, possible. So I kind of wish we could access that for our shows. Oh, be funny. I know. <laughs> also, we have Cunt Honey Baby merch up on DragQueenMerch.com. So CHB. make sure you head over there. I want a Cunt Honey baggie so bad. You can order it. And Friday, we will be at Precinct downtown DT, DTLA for Bitch Puddin' Show Bitchin'. It's our first time doing her show. Yeah. I'm so excited. And I'm so excited to go back to Precincts. I've never been. What? Except yes, for those times. No, I have. Okay, I've never been since. I never is a weird word to choose to use then. Well, you know, I never say never. Mm. All right. Well, we'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> no, it's so funny that we... Remember at the end, we do like, we, we lean in and we pretend like we're talking. Like in a, like in a talk show. Are you seeing all the stuff about the guy from ITV or whatever? The guy who like, he's like a... Oh, he yes. He groomed that kid. Ooh. Oh, no, that's so bad. Yeah. I used to love watching them. Well, like but, the little TikTok clips of them laughing. But let's be honest, we're only watching for yes. Allison Hammond. Yes, yes, yes. Right? Obviously. Did you see her talking about it? She was crying. No. Because she's like, I mean, I still love him. He's my friend, but what he did was so bad. And I was like, <gasps> Allison Hammond, you should, you never have to cry for him. You should only be drinking whiskey, whiskey with, with Harrison, Harrison Ford. Ford and Ryan Gosling. Oh, I love her. Do you? think that when we eventually break up it'll be a big scandal no i think it'll be a car accident oh how is your new house living situation it's so good i know it's fabulous i'm so happy for you i did a i did a wig the other night i had all my wig stuff in the living room and it was getting late and i was like can i just leave this here and they were like we don't care but i'm gonna clean it tonight good because there is, okay, people do say they don't care, but then there are certain moments where they do. Well, because she, th there's other stuff going on in there too, and I don't care. You know what I mean? Oh, that kidnapped person. No, they did a haircut. It was weird because they do hair, there's like a little hair section in my living room. <laughs> and, it's weird, there's like a pile of hair. And someone came over to do hair, and he was just like, getting his hair cut in our living room. We were watching that show. Oh my God, we were watching that show, The Ultimatum, Queer Love. 
Okay, but listen. No, 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 no. I support. I it, support lesbian lifestyle. I would never. Well, there's another one that's straight. There, it, there's. Oh, I don't want the straight one. It is really fascinating. So the show is ten couple or five couples, ten people. They come, they mix and mingle, and one of the people in the couple is saying, "You, you have to marry me, or we gotta get, we gotta change, we gotta be done." And the other person's like, "I don't know if I want to get married. I want to see what else is out there." So they switch. They all switch partners. They choose a different partner, and they live with each other for three weeks in a trial marriage with someone completely different. Then they have to go back to their originals and live with them for three weeks after having learned or grown. It is fascinating. And there is this one character on it, Vanessa, who is psychotic. Okay, I'm in. But I fantastic. do love that. And the name Vanessa. She, she, she wrote a letter at the changeover when they all have dinner at the changeover to go back to their original partners, she was like, I wrote something down and I'd like to read it if it's okay. And she takes out a piece of notebook paper and she stands up and she reads this n note, this poem, cause she's a poet on Instagram. That's what she does. Alexis Michelle. I don't think Alexis is that insane. This this woman is crazy. I don't know. I want to get I want to get back into reality TV. I'm having such a hard time. Yeah, because you know I love my K drama. You know I haven't really even been watching The Housewives recently. I'm excited for the new New York. I will watch that. <gasps> oh, I'm excited for the new New York. It's coming in July, that. I think. Yeah, which is such a beautiful month. It is yeah. my birthday month, and you do have time to shop birthday presents and stuff. You know When's what I your like. birthday? Don't even fucking joke, you bitch. Wait, are you serious? July, July 25th. 25th. Okay. July 25th, 2004. I'm really excited to continue to celebrate as I further... No, wait, this will be my first time in my 20s. No, wait, that's next year. <laughs> Sorry, I just finished math class yesterday. I'm dressed as a cheeseburger because, can uh, I be honest? I'm hungry. Ever since I saw Trisha Paytas go to two McDonald's to get a Little Mermaid toy from the Happy Meal, uh, I really want a cheeseburger. I mean, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. I haven't, I'm not doing it. Is there it. a Burger King around here? Can we get an Impossible Whop? Would she? No, but I want, like, I have my mouth's watering as I talk about it. McDonald's cheeseburgers. And I'm talking about the quarter pounder, baby. Oh, I got to love a QP. You love a QP. I did. I really did. And it's been years and years and years, but there was a moment where I was like, you could do it. Nobody will know. Think of but the know. shits you would have oh, afterwards. I would be sick. Or for you days. would mostly be constipated, I believe. I've never been constipated my entire life. You've never been constipated? Well, that's not true. When I was 12, I was put on antibiotics that constipated me and my mom had to give me an enema. I was 12. You should text her that. <laughs> there I was, face pressed against some, and I hadn't gone through puberty yet, okay? I was a late bloomer, I was a child. And Sounds like, like she groomed you. And there it is, it, <laughs> it didn't so, work. Sorry. It didn't work, bitch. Oh, she, yeah, she tried anyway, to groom you to be a Christian. Well, she just groomed me into being a bottom, I have to say. It wasn't the worst feeling. But yeah, that's the only time I've ever been constipated. I was like 12. I am diarrhea constantly. <laughs> Let me tell you. We, whenever we perform live, it doesn't matter what it's for, I will have diarrhea all day. And yesterday, I had diarrhea all day. And we didn't have Imodium. Imodium, I love, I would love to be sponsored by Imodium. I fucking love Imodium. I think it's brilliant. We didn't have it, all we had was kale, pe kale pectate. Kale pectate doesn't do shit for me. So I had to go get Imodium. And let me tell you, Imodium, your product, fantastic. I mean, if you're constipated, don't ever try it because it constipates you. But, oh, I was farting free. I knew no matter what I pushed out, it would just be air. Thanks, Imodium. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>